Hey guys, hope you're doing well. A reminder that all of these videos get put on podcast. Scott and Kelly, and if you want to leave us an Apple review, we would love it. Praise God. And all of Kelly's homemaking stuff's over on her channel. At Home with Kelly. Praise God. Kelly with an I. God bless. Uh, today we're uh, chatting about a common question. How do you have a family and a home on one income? How do you bring your wife home? How do you quit your job? Mm -hmm. All things around money and coming home yeah. from working. And so, great question because I think that's what is on everyone's. I mean, the whole reason people work is financial things. It's the reason that Dave Ramsey is so popular. It's, you know, this area of money and how to succeed in life financially is a huge part of our daily lives. It's one of the biggest stresses in life. It's mm -hmm. one of the biggest contributors to divorce is financial stress. And I would also say that it's one of the other most comments of, well, in today's world, you can't have... A woman not working mm. we get it's that it's the comment. biggest objection to having your wife home yeah that you're going to be living in poverty mm -hmm. and another common objection is what if your husband dies if he's the only breadwinner and you're at home what if your husband dies mm -hmm. so we just wanted to address those concerns and chat a little bit about the world view on a home economy on building a home economy number one of number ones is life insurance. The way life insurance works is that you take out a policy and every year you pay a small amount. You know, it could be as small as a couple hundred dollars, could be however much you can afford uh, per year. And when you die, when you die, because all husbands will die, your family estate that you leave behind will get a lump sum payment of whatever you have taken in your policy. You can take whatever size policy you want, million bucks, 20 million bucks, whatever, doesn't really matter. What do you think your wife and family need to live on if you go? That is your number one, number safeguard. one safeguard. And you'll have, I'm sure in your church, someone who sells life insurance that you can talk to and get this done in a, in a week. So that's number one. Number two, getting out of debt and living below your means. We're very grateful to D Diddley Dave <laughs> We were in credit card debt, student debt, not in a place of being able to go to one income, or so we thought. We had been saving up money. I was still working at the time. We felt super convicted listening to Dave Ramsey about paying off our student loans. So we paid off the rest of it instead of paying just the minimum. minimum. Well, we were paying more than the minimum, but we just thought we would carry on just mm. paying it. We felt a great conviction to just Get it done. Get it done. So we did. And then I think it was just a few weeks later that I quit my job. And so that was kind of terrifying because it was like, oh, no, we just got rid of debt, which means we emptied a lot of our bank account. And now I'm quitting my job. And we still had we had already paid off a credit card debt. So we didn't have any more debt. And we just had land payments that mm -hmm. we were making, which we ended up selling part of the land at the end of that same year in order to get totally out of debt, which ended up being a huge blessing because when we went to South Africa in 2020, Scott had quit his job and we went over there and that was obviously when the chaos of the world happened. We had already paid off our land payment. We had no debt when we went to South Africa. We had our emergency fund in the bank and the world obviously shut down and we got stuck in South Africa for seven and a half months and it wasn't a huge deal mm -hmm. because we had, had it. No we, yeah, we didn't have any debt. There was no payments to be made. So we were so grateful that we did the uncomfortable thing yeah. of paying off debt. The real value in paying off debt is not that you've now paid off your debt, which is great. It's a great feeling. The real value is learning to live under your means and be disciplined with your cash flow. That is the number one element in success in having a so-called one income household or bringing your wife home to be a homemaker is being able to have financial discipline, is being able to say, here's our goals financially and we're going to go hit it. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're on track, we have a tracker or we have a budget, whichever way you prefer, we use a tracker. Yeah. So in other words, every week, Kelly enters in all of our receipts, everything we spend, she matches it up with our bank account online. And that's where all our money has gone. And it's like, wow, this is how much we spent on coffee shops. This is how much we spent on groceries. This is how much we spent on fuel. These are our payments that we've made. These are our expenses. There it all is. And then our incomes. Here's everything we've made this week or month. And so we know incomes minus expenses equals cash flow. 
And so every week or so we can see, are we winning this week or are we losing? And you make it a game. Are we winning because we're positive in cash flow or are we losing because we're negative in cash flow? We lost money this week. Which was really inspired from Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow mm -hmm. game because I was really intimidated by money. I didn't feel... And stressed out. Yeah, I didn't feel comfortable with money. I didn't feel like I understood how to save and the concept of his game is cash flow and so we took that and that's kind of how we ended up making our tracker mm. was tracking where our money is going and are we still net positive yeah. or are we negative and I think seeing that it makes you disciplined discipline but also there's like something in you there's like this excitement when you're winning I think that's mm -hmm. it of like you can win at this game of money yeah and so that leads to now the third thing. Now that you're disciplined and you know where your money's going and where it's coming from, you can start to build multiple streams of income. You don't just want a one income household. He goes off to his job and comes back home. That's our one income. You want to start building multiple streams of income. And we're not experts on this. We've, we haven't got there yet, but we're on the journey of what are all the things we can do with our skills, our context, our talents, the things that we see to add different incomes. And a lot of people, have very different contexts to us, different talents, different skills. skills. What can you do to add streams of income to your household, to your tracker? How can we bring in different income, more income? It's a great game to start looking at and playing. And if you're living below your means, you're not stressed out while you're doing it. Because I think that is the big stress is like, well, how are we going to make our bills this month? How are we going to survive? Yeah. And so you, you want to be first living below your means and knowing where your money is going i think that goes such a long way there's the joel salatin quote of a dollar saved is a dollar 25 earned and it's probably more now because i'm sure taxes are different from when we first started reading his books but understanding that any way you can have a productive home where you create things from home that's less of your hard-earned money that you're spending on taxable mm -hmm. items. So making your own laundry soap, you're going to get way more out of it. It's going to cost way less and you're not paying taxes mm -hmm. on a jug of mostly watered laundry soap, but yep. you're instead making it at home. And that goes with everything. Buying food in bulk. Not eating out. Mm -hmm. There's just an abundance to do to build your home economy. And so that's why we always encourage looking at being a homemaker as being a home economist or a home manager yeah. because you're not just at home surviving. Yeah, and the problem with that is survival and boredom creates comfort shopping, comfort mm -hmm. consuming. So if you don't have, you know, that is the great secret source of Dave Ramsey's plan is that you get super intensely focused on a goal. What does it take to win? That's what we're going after. It gives you meaning. So you're not bored, you have meaning. And instead of just trying to get by, you've got a goal that you're moving towards and it makes you super disciplined and it makes you energized to win financially. But if you're just at home and live out the straw man of being a homemaker, which is just sit in your big box McMansion in the suburb, sit at home, be bored because you, oh, you can't go out and work. You want to be a homemaker. You're going to get bored. You're going to get stressed out. And so you're going to start comfort shopping and comfort consuming and spending a lot of money that you don't need to spend if you were more focused on what are we trying to do? What assets are you trying to purchase? What income streams are you trying to build? And that's where the whole Proverbs 31 lady comes in is you're not going out and having your time controlled by people who aren't your husband. You and your husband are building an economy. Number one, living below your means, controlling what you can control, making stuff that you can make rather than consuming. And then number two, how do you build different income streams together? How do you build more assets and value together? And then how do you help your husband in a way that he can expand mm -hmm. his yeah. work and mission? Yeah, how do you be a, a help me to your husband's earning potential? You know, what is he good at? How is he earning money? How can you help him increase his income streams? And I think something that's really important with this is using your time wisely and I think a, a trap with a lot of homemakers is spending time on social media apps that make you envious or jealous or long for things that or other people have. And so then you think in order to live a happy home life, you need this expensive kitchen tool or you need your home to look like something out of the Magnolia magazine. And instead of thinking within our context, 
Within our means, how can I have an enjoyable, peaceful home that's functional, where I'm not spending a lot of money on decorating? How can I make things? Learning to be creative in the home within the means that you have. There's no problem with being inspired by other people, with following people that are inspiring you and you aspire to live like, but it's something to be aware of. Are you watching someone that makes you Discontent. Yeah, that's the word. Discontent with your own life and feeling like, well, if I had this, I would be happier. Or if I could spend more money here, I would be happier. And instead reframe it of, well, what can I do to make my home a more special place? Or if you do want to buy something, how can I thrift it? Or I'm going to pray about it and ask that the Lord would Mm -hmm. provide. That wonderful saying that we love of lack of resources creates resourcefulness. We don't want to be in a poverty mindset of, well, you've just got to live in your poverty and have a happy smile. It's a wonderful thing to build value, build assets, create wealth. That's a, it's a good thing. It's a measure of success uh, that the Bible lays out for men, is to become a wealthy man who wields his wealth as unto the Lord and for the good of his family and for his neighbors. It's good to be wealthy. And so we want to build wealth. And how you build wealth is by stewarding what you have and being resourceful giving your gift, giving your talent to others. The mindset that we can get trapped in is being a one income household. Well, I'm just gonna go work my job and hope for the best. When actually there's a lot of tools available to us to build toward being a multiple income household, to being a high value household. And the best way to do that is to start by living below your means and being grateful for what you do have while working toward the things that you want. A great thing of living below your means and being at home and having the time to be a help me to your husband to start creating value in the home and and creating multiple income streams is that you're no longer under the schedule or control of people who are not your husband. You're no longer under the time and energy suck of going to a job somewhere else. Being tied down. Being tied down to that and coming home and and being exhausted and, and stress in the home and all that. And that allows you to then start thinking of, well, what are the ways that you can build value and and wealth in the home, from the home, for the home? You know, there's a lot of ladies who are trapped in this moral dilemma of, well, I don't want to be in the corporate world or working a job because it's terrible and stressful. But a lot of ladies then have a lot of guilt that they're not bringing an income in anymore. And so the main issue that, that we are on is not you shouldn't make money. That's not the issue. The issue is your your time and control. Who controls your time? Who controls your energy? What are you doing to help your husband? That's the number one issue here of being a homemaker is your number one priority is helping your husband with his mission. If his mission is getting out of debt, if his mission is some career or some project, how can you now help him? Because you now have time and energy to help him in a way that that he would want you to help him versus being gone and stressed out and working for some other corporation or man. And if one of those things is your husband's desire is to get out of debt, I think a lot of people think immediately, oh, if we want to get out of debt, my only option is to go get a job. Mm -hmm. And the problem is with that is then you are now putting all of your time, energy into the hands of some other man instead of your husband. So instead, reframe your mind of what are the things that I can do from home that can still help us with our mission of getting out of debt. So that could be What are some things in the house that you don't need anymore? Put them on Facebook Marketplace and sell them. Another thing could be cutting back on grocery spending and trying to buy more ingredients. So, okay, if we cut down on our grocery budget, then that money that we were spending extra on groceries or extra on eating out, instead we're gonna use that money towards paying off debt. Instead of buying new clothes, we're gonna buy thrifted clothes or we're gonna wait a few months before we buy any clothes. A lot of this, topic comes down to what are we doing with our lives yeah because if your goal is just to live in the suburbs in a big box mcmansion have two nice new cars have all the nice clothes be seen out at all the social events that's fine if that's what you want sure but then to be a homemaker in that context you have to ask your husband how can i best help you to achieve this if he wants you to go off and work at a corporation that would be submitting to him to do that you just have to understand what is it that you're trying to achieve in life and I presume a lot of people that the big box McMansion lifestyle is not what you want to achieve. You know, there's some other achievement. And, and this is what we're really drilling down to when it comes to money is what is your vision? What is your million dollar vision? What's your $10 million vision? Whatever it is. But what are you trying to achieve in life 
with the money that you're making because that that's what the purpose of money is right it's here's where we're going it requires money so we go off and work to create money or to create value or to achieve the things that we're trying to achieve with our life and so you have to as a family say what is it that we're trying to achieve that is where our money and our time and our energy is going to be spent and focused and again coming back to dave ramsey of getting out of debt it's an incredibly energizing thing to be like our whole goal as a family is to get out of debt going to work well now you have purpose not going and spending money at the shop and not going out to eat and not all of it has incredible purpose finding resourceful ways to go on dates and resourceful ways to enjoy ourselves and finding resourceful entertainment it becomes incredibly enjoyable because you're now got a goal but when a goal goes away and you just get into living of like yep just i need a new car we need new clothes we need new entertainment new restaurants that life you're living a life of comfort because you don't have a life of purpose it's not that your life is unaffordable it's that you don't have a purpose to your life or a, a goal for your life and again thinking about the context around that if your context is you just want more time together as a family you want to live simply then living in la or new york where you're living is not suiting your goals because you're living in a place that has different goals in order to live in that place your goals have to be different. And if any of you ladies want further context on building the home economy, I will link my video on homemaking and building the home economy. I go into full detail of understanding our role and purpose as helpmeets and homemakers. It is a good thing to have a productive home and to see what you're doing at home as very important. You didn't just leave a job to come home. Praise God. God bless you guys.